So Matt, years ago, I, I needed to make some money. So I went and got a job as a waiter. And I thought to myself, finally, now I can put food on the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know why that made me laugh. I think because it's clever. <laughs> <laughs> clever, slightly stupid, you know, but it works. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the graveyard. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Adam. And my name's Matt. Now, pull up a tombstone or settle into your casket and get comfortable because this is Graveyard Tales. <laughs> All right, everybody, here we are again. Matt, how you doing tonight, brother? Man, I'm doing all right. Good deal. Good deal. So it, this will give away probably when we're recording it, but it, we're supposed to have big temperature drop at night here soon. So I got to cover my garden yeah. and everything. But like I was telling you, the weird part for me is they said we were going to have egg size hail. And uh -huh. Ash yeah. and I were talking. I'm like, what egg, though? You know, <laughs> I hope to God it's not ostrich eggs. So. My dad gum like. M Mork, Mork and Mindy egg. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if it's the size of a Volkswagen. Yeah, I mean caterpillar eggs, hummingbird eggs. Okay, I can deal with that. Jeez, I need to be more specific for smart, uh, <laughs> smart Alex like me. That's right. So real quick, we want to say go check out the Podbelly Network at podbelly.com. You can find a list of shows that we're associated with. Happy to be associated with the Podbelly Network, but it may be shows that you can't find any uh, anywhere else. And I promise you, you're going to like some of those shows there. So go check them out, podbelly.com. We also want to thank tonight's sponsor, Raycon, and we will talk more about them shortly. And while you're on the internet doing your thing, go over to patreon.com slash graveyard tales, and you can sign up to become a patron and get bonus episodes from me and Matt. Uh, we have started putting out ad free audio for our $10 patrons. So if we have a show that has an ad, then you can get that without the ad. If you're a $10 patron, $10 patrons also get the video versions of us recording these episodes, and they also get the bonus weekly episodes and everybody else on there gets a bonus weekly episode. The $1 gets the audio. The $5 gets the audio and video of mm -hmm. the bonus episode. So go over there and check it out. There's going to be something there for everybody. If you want bonus episodes, right? All right, Matt. So this time of year, everyone's talking about making big changes, you know, which mm -hmm. it's all well and good, but most of the time, the big changes are pretty unrealistic. You know, it's like you decide, oh, I, I, I'm going to learn to fly this year. And I don't mean like just like jumping off a building. Flapping and your arms. Yeah, but like <laughs> for most of us, we don't have the money to go take a, a pilot lessons and all this stuff. So it, it's kind of unrealistic. But I've found that the smallest changes to your routine can actually make the biggest impact. In, yeah. And in the same way, you don't have to break the bank to make a big deal purchase. Even the smallest things can be a part of a big change if it's something you use every day, like Raycons. And I use my Raycons all the time. I mean, I, I literally just talked to uh, one of the people at our host company about how I use our Ray, my Raycons every day. I've got them in my ears yeah. all the time. And Raycon is premium audio at the perfect price point, so you can build great habits without breaking the bank. And that, I mean, I'll tell you, one of the coolest things for me is that they are water and sweat resistant because I wear them when I'm working, like I'm working out in oh, the yard, yeah. working out at the gym, whatever. I don't have to worry about sweating on them. You can even wear them at the beach, walking up and down the beach or jogging up and down the beach. You don't have to worry, oh, I got hit with a rogue wave, oops. My earbuds are dead. That's not true with Raycon. Yeah, and forget about losing one, uh, you know, at the beach because with the custom gel tips that make the fit more comfortable, these things they will not fall out. Oh yeah, and and the noise isolation lets you really hear whatever it is you're listening to, whether it's 
uh, you know, Graveyard Tales podcast or, you know, your ACDC album or yeah, right. that, <laughs> that cla- classical music, whatever. You're it's listening gonna to sound Adam better. sing covers. I mean, <laughs> that's right. You're, it's going to sound better on your Raycon. So whether you're looking for a pair of the everyday earbuds, which is what Adam and I use, mm-hmm. um, low latency gaming headphones, or a speaker with a battery that will last all night at your next party, Raycon's got you covered. And yes, Raycon start at half the price of other premium audio brands. That's amazing. Yeah. So if you're ready to buy something with a big impact, go to buyraycon.com slash tails today and get 15% off your Raycon order. That's right. Go to buy Raycon, B-U-I-R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash tails, T-A-L-E-S, to get 15% off buy Raycon.com slash tails. So Matt, that's all I've got for the intro. So this is going to be, I would say out of the normal graveyard tales wheelhouse. So why don't you tell us what are we talking about tonight, brother? Balloons. We, we're talking about balloons and yes, you know, which balloons we're referring to the birthday ones, the birthday balloons, mylar, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) in the shape of a number. (laughs) No, so, I mean, unless you've been living under a rock, uh, you've heard these stories regarding the United States military shooting down, quote unquote, spy balloons that have managed to fly into or near U.S. airspace. And I know my my first thought when, when this story broke was, what? Yeah. How the hell, you know, did, did this thing just float? And, and then I was, well, why are they just letting it float? Right. You know, now they're just kind of watching people are going outside. It was so dead gum big that people could see it from the Mm -hmm. ground Mm -hmm. and it was 60,000 feet up. But, you know, Adam and I, we've talked a lot about this. We, we, we haven't addressed it until now. And it's been, you know, just, just over a month uh, when we're recording this. Um, but with everything that's kind of unfolded, we thought, you know, this will, this will be fun. We, we can, we can talk about this. We can talk about some other things that are related and kind of put our own graveyard tales spin on things about, you know, what, what we think might really be going on. Okay. Right. So, so just kind of kick back and get ready. Cause you're going to, you're going to hit, you're going to hear some stuff tonight. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna push a lot of different information at you and that's right. have a lot of different comparisons and it may be kind of back and forth. And then you're going to get yeah. mine and Matt's take on it. So like yeah. Matt said, you're going to get a lot. So just kind of hang out and, Enjoy it. Yeah. And understand you're going to, you're going to kind of be a, a fly. This is how graveyard tales started. Okay. <laughs> yeah. These were the, the conversations of us standing in my kitchen going back and forth and somebody just making another point, making another point, mm-hmm. going back and forth and back and forth. This is how all of this began. So we're, we're really kind of giving you the insight on this is what Adam and I do all the time. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, this is, we still do this and usually yeah. never gets recorded. So it'll be <laughs> right. interesting. We're, we're not for, recording. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, so getting into this, so we're, we're going to start off with talking about the, like I said, the quote unquote spy balloon. So uh, as I said, the, the events in question occurred just over a month ago from the time of this recording, uh, beginning on February 4th, 2023. So on that day, the U.S. military used an F-16 fighter jet to fire uh, an AIM-9 Sidewinder missile. I mean, that's that's important. I learned what AIM means. Oh yeah, air intercept missile. Yep. Okay, I didn't I didn't know that. So now I learned something. 
Um, but they used that to take down what the government reported to be a Chinese spy balloon about six miles off the coast of South Carolina. Um, now, according to reports, the balloon was carrying devices intended to intercept sensitive communications. Now, regardless of how you feel about this situation, you know, the, these are the facts. Okay. Right. I mean, this is just the bare bones. This is what happened. Okay. So we shot down the balloon and it's back to business as usual, right? Well, it would have been, except for the discovery of three additional balloon like items just a week later. So the first one was shot down on February 10th, which I believe was a Friday over Dead Horse, Alaska. Now, if you're unfamiliar with where Dead Horse is located, it's way up along the northern coast of Alaska. There's not too many people that live up that way. It got the name because if you were riding your horse up there constantly, that's where your horse would die. It could right. make it there <laughs> and then die. I don't know. I made that up. That may be true. It may not be. I don't. I've never been to Alaska. Me either. But I want to. I wonder how many how how many areas of Alaska you can legitimately ride a horse. Um, <laughs> I imagine there's some, but not yeah. all. You probably couldn't ride a horse to dead horse. That would That's be a right. problem. Yeah, most likely. Uh, I think it. That, I think this thing when it when it came down, it was it landed over sea ice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that you know, tells you something. Um, but the reports of that one said that the object was approximately the size of a small car. Now, they estimated the other one, the, the Chinese one, to be about the size of, what, two to three school buses. Yeah, huge. So this one, a, a lot smaller. Then one day later, on February 11th, another balloon was shot down, this time over the Canadian Yukon Territory, which makes up the majority of Alaska's western border. Now, the second device was metallic. It was uh, cylindrical, in, uh, cylindrical in shape and balloon-like with a small payload attached to it. Now, I, I looked, and there's really been no word on what that payload included. Did, yeah. Have you seen anything about no, that one? Uh, and I did see, though, that that balloon that you're talking about was not recovered and that would be the reason why we don't exactly know because yeah. you said it landed over sea ice they couldn't recover it well that was the first one and 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 you're right because of all that because of where it was it was difficult to recover out in the middle of the Yukon also extraordinarily difficult to recover yep. especially in winter um you know, it it not these aren't easily accessible areas. You can fly over them, but finding somewhere where you can, you know, drop down a recovery team safely, uh, you know, this just you know, now now really isn't the time, I I would assume. But yeah. it, it these articles, all of them, you know, mentioned how the the weather and the region worked against being able to recover this stuff. Mm-hmm. But then, so they say, an another one, a third additional object was shot down over Lake Huron on February 12th, three days, three balloons. It made it a pretty busy weekend in the shooting down balloon business. Mm -hmm. um, I know I got my bird shot out. And I was just waiting. <laughs> it's like, come on. What else is going to fly over Standing here? on my roof with my bird shot, my Benelli going, come on, buddy. Well, I mean, you know, my neighbor came over all pissed. He was like, dude, you just shot down my brand new drone. I said, <laughs> oh, man, my bad. I thought it was a spy balloon. Yeah, I thought it was a Chinese spy balloon. Don't be flying that right now. <laughs> but the the third one was initially seen on radar. That was my daughter's birthday balloon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Couldn't you tell that it looked like a big number three? <laughs> yeah. It had the little mermaid on it for... I I thought maybe they were just numbering the spy balloons now. Yeah. They keep getting, track of them. They're getting number three, there's number three. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but anyway, the um that third one, the one that went down over Lake Huron, 
It was originally seen the day before on radar. It was in Canada, about 70 miles north of the U.S. border. And they actually deployed jets at that time, but they couldn't find it. They couldn't locate it. But then it reappeared on radar the next day over Wisconsin. And then the object was tracked across the upper peninsula of Michigan and subsequently fired upon and taken down over Lake Huron. So, of course, you know, you're talking about more heavily populated areas. They let it float out over the water and shot it down. Yep. Okay. So all that, you know, okay. So now we, we've we've shot down four balloons in, uh, in, in the period of uh, just over a week. Okay. And... Like I said, the, the Chinese government did claim ownership to the original one, but they also said that it was merely a weather balloon collecting atmospheric data. Mm-hmm. Now, from what I understand from a video that I watched earlier today, as a matter of fact, um, that that one had like 16 solar panels on it. Yeah. They're like, you don't really need solar panels, especially ones that big. If all you're doing is collecting weather data, right? You know, temperature, wind speed, those type things, humidity. uh, You don't really have to have that kind of that kind of power, but you do if it's you know broadcasting signals. Um, and it does look like that the Chinese had some limited ability to steer this device. Um, and and it and it did have the capacity to broadcast communication signals. So it was much more sophisticated than the other three, for sure. Now, the other three, though, are still kind of a mystery. All three were much smaller than the original Chinese device, which was described, like I said, the size of two to three school buses. Um, And the payload on that one was, it said it was about the size of a small plane. Yeah. Um, Crazy. So, I mean, this was big. So... On radar, they said it looked like a plane. Yeah. You know, they, it was it was the right size. They thought it was a plane. Now, the additional three balloons also did not have, did not appear to have any means of steering, suggesting that they were just set aloft to be carried by the wind. Now, adding to the mystery is the U.S. military's quick response to the new arrivals. I, I mean, we watched that Chinese balloon fly over a large portion of the United States before they eventually took it down. Yeah. Yeah. But the other three were intercepted quickly without much hesitation at all. And officials reported that unlike the Chinese balloon, which traveled at about 60,000 feet, the others drifted around 20 to 40,000 feet, which made them a viable threat to commercial air traffic, which travels around 30,000 feet. So that was the that was the reasoning provided is why they acted so quickly is because this was a safety threat um, because it it shared airspace with regular commercial air traffic. Okay, mm-hmm. I buy that. I buy that. Maybe for now a the, nickel. <laughs> <laughs> now the White House has officially stated that they do not believe that extraterrestrials or aliens had anything to do with any of the balloons that were shot down, even going so far as to report that past UFO or UAP reports near military bases were most likely surveillance devices that were not initially identified as such. Mm-hmm. So, so we are, we are, can't talk. We are retroactively, uh, claiming that this is responsible for other UFO sightings, UAP sightings sure. around yeah. military bases. Yeah. So before we didn't know what they were. Now, oh, they were probably spy balloons. Yeah, they're, they're, they're balloons. They're balloons. But see, okay. Before we get any further, and I, I'm going to ask this question, but I don't necessarily want an answer. I just want to throw this out there for thought. Okay. We knew they were balloons. Why was alien UFO UAP ever brought up in the conversation? I know, know, right? What was the tie that made that uh, necessary to be said? 
And I know some people were talking about it on the internet and stuff, but that doesn't, you can talk about stuff on the internet and the president is not going to come out and react Address to it. what yeah. you're saying on the internet. So the question to think about while we go through this whole episode, why were they so quick to come out and say, oh, well, that these were not alien. We found no evidence of alien devices on these balloons. And we think military uh, sightings of UAPs were spy balloons. Mm-hmm. Why? So just yeah. keep that question in your head as we go through this. Episode. I know it's, it's definitely something to think about. And you know what? Here's something else to think about. I have my theories. I'll tell you later. <laughs> the, the, you know, the U S government reported that they had been looking into the Chinese spy balloon program for the last 18 months. Hmm. Yeah. And then they, then they come out with, they said at least three potential spy balloons entered U S airspace during the Trump administration. And another flew over early in Joe Biden's presidency. We didn't so, hear anything about them. Right. But this indicates to me that this has been an ongoing issue. Right. But possibly much further back than just a few years. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're already talking about this over a, a week's time. And then we find out that for the last year and a half, the government has been looking into this being mm-hmm. a possibility. I mean, let's be real. Do they, you think this started 18 months ago? Yeah, no, 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 absolutely not. They've been looking at this most likely because it's happened before. And we have evidence that it's happened before. That's right. That's right. So, so Adam, you know, Adam makes a a really good point. Um, you know, why come out and just immediately say, oh, it's not aliens. Hey, whatever, whatever you think, it's not alien. Yeah. Yeah. What? Why? We didn't say that it was. Yeah. Well, well I'm sure some, some people said somebody it did. Yeah. But not enough. No. I mean, not enough people for, like you said, for the president to come out and it was, address it. It wasn't a general consensus of the nation that right. the people from. Uh, Epsilon something or other were sending nylon balloons to to Earth, (laughs) you know? Right, right. (laughs) But I I do get the feeling that this has been going on for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And I think Adam's Adam's got some evidence that that's exactly what happened, something that we've discussed on this show before. Yep. And that's right, Matt. We have we've discussed this on a previous episode. So if you want to go further in depth on this, go back and find the episode titled I think it's Fugo and Area Fifty One mm-hmm. is I think what we titled it. I don't remember the number. Um but we gotta look at the Fugo experiment and the mm-hmm. Fugo balloons because this is not the first time that balloons have been sent across the continental United States. And a lot of this information comes from history, uh, the history.com site from where mm-hmm. I used in the previous episode. But the Fugo bombs were high altitude balloon bombs launched by Japan to attack North America. Now, after American aircraft bombed Tokyo and other Japanese cities during the Doolittle Raid of 1942, the Japanese military command wanted to retaliate in kind, but its manned aircraft were incapable of reaching the west coast of the United States. So what the Japanese military lacked in technology, though, it made up for in geography. Mm -hmm. So since the 13th century, when a pair of cyclones foiled the fleets of Kublai Khan's Mongol invaders, the Japanese long believed that the gods had dispatched divine winds called kamikaze to protect them. So during World War II, the military thought the winds could save them once again since its scientists had discovered that a westerly river of air 30,000 feet high, known now as the jet stream, could transport hydrogen-filled balloons to North America in three to four days. 
So for two years, the military produced thousands of balloons with skins of lightweight but durable paper made from uh, mulberry wood that was stitched together by conscripted schoolgirls oblivious to their sinister purposes. So using 40-foot-long ropes attached to the balloons, the military mounted incendiary devices and 30-pound high-explosive bombs rigged to drop over North America and spark massive forest fires that would instill panic and divert resources from the war effort. Now, between November 1944 and April 1945, the Japanese military launched more than 9,000 of these pilotless weapons in an operation codenamed Fugo. Most of the balloons fell harmlessly into the Pacific Ocean, but more than 300 of the low-tech orbs made the 5,000-mile crossing and were actually spotted in the skies over the western United States and Canada. From Holy Cross, Alaska, to Nogales, Arizona, and even as far east as Grand Rapids, Michigan. So, they made it a good long way. Now, in March of 1945, one balloon even hit a high-tension power line and caused a temporary blackout at the Hanford, Washington plant that was producing plutonium that would be used in the atomic bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki five months later. Well, none of the balloons, however, had caused any injuries until Archie Mitchell's church group came across the wreckage of one in Gearhart Mountain. And this is the account that we discussed that killed the minister, Archie Mitchell, um, killed his wife, their unborn baby, and five children in the church group almost instantly. So if you want to hear that whole account, go back to that episode. Now, Citing the need to prevent panic and avoid giving the enemy uh, location information that could allow them to hone their targeting, the U.S. military censored reports about the Japanese balloon bombs. Although many um, Bly locals knew the truth about the explosion there in Gearhart Mountain, uh, they reluctantly followed mi military directives and adopted a code of silence about the tragedy as the media reported that the victims died in a, quote, Explosion of Undetermined Origin. Now, by the end of 1945, the military decided in the interest of public safety to reveal the true cause of the explosion and warn Americans to beware of any strange white balloons they might encounter. In, uh, information divulged a month or two later for the victims in Oregon. Now, ultimately, Fugo was a military failure. Few balloons reached their targets, and the jet stream winds were only powerful enough in wintertime when snowy and damp conditions in North American forests precluded the ignition of large fires. So the only casualties they caused were the deaths of the five innocent children and the pregnant woman, the first and only fatalities in the continental United States due to enemy action in World War II. So the reason... There's a few reasons why this pertains to the balloons now. One, it mm -hmm. shows that we have been dealing with balloons being sent to the United States for decades, for a long, long time. And during the Fugo thing, they decided to cover it up. They right. initially went with a cover up and said, no, 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 no. You know, it's, it's not. There's nothing going on. You don't know what's happening. And we tried to tie that in to Area 51 if you go listen to that episode. But mm -hmm. it makes me wonder why now were they so quick to air it mm -hmm. and, you know, go all out with what it was. And then again, bring in the alien thing when. Yeah. We have history of balloons. Why do we need to put anything else on these balloons rather than them just being balloons? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, uh, when they came out with the Fugo stuff and they finally said it, they said, these are balloons sent by Japan. They didn't do much damage. They did some, but you, I mean, you talk to the families of those five children, it was enough damage that those did. Right. But the the balloons we have now have not done any damage like that. But 
they came right out and said these are balloons and they're they're uh, not alien. Yeah. So just weird. But well, when you when you consider this now, I um I was watching an interview with a uh, with with an expert in espionage. And he was saying, you know, look, the, the idea that you you would attach a bomb or any explosive device to a balloon and let it just kind of float. They're like, modern warfare is m- much more sophisticated than that. Right. Said, you know, we have we have long range missiles, mm. you know, that can, you know, go halfway around the world. Okay, I mean, we don't we don't have to send crap by balloon Mm. anymore. So why do it? Right. Um, That's not again, that's not what it's for. You know, it, it, you know, everybody kind of, you know, had a little bit of panic, you know, when they first hear heard this. But it, 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 it was it would never have been intended for that. I mean, that would have been useless. So. But, the you know, as modern warfare is different. Um, what, what you learn is the, the most valuable res- the most valuable resource in, in any conflict is information. Sure. It's information. So, um, that's what, the, that's what all countries, that's what they're after. You know, the more information I have about my enemy or however you want to address it about, you know, the, a, a country that I'm at odds with. The more information I have, the, the better suited I am to defend myself or exploit their weaknesses. So that's, I mean, that's where it is. I mean, it's, it's information, but again, with Adam, I'm talking about why were they so quick to come out and drop the, it's not alien. Mm-hmm. Well, I think some of it has to do with the declassified videos um, from yep. uh, from the military on these UAP sightings. Yep. Because now it's it, it's kind of been in the forefront um, of of UFO enthusiasts and you know just people with even a slight interest in the idea of uh, extraterrestrials that with the release of these videos were the last couple of years, we've just been kind of, Oh my God, what, you know, is this a possibility? You know, does the government know something that they haven't been telling us? Um, so they come out and they address it really, really quick. And I I think that's part of it. And one of those videos, yeah. One of those videos, um, it, it is, uh, I, I I looked into a little bit more, and that's that's the the now famous gimbal video. Um, all right, so if we concede that these balloons are not extraterrestrial in nature, um, does that mean that that so many of these UFO UAP sightings are actually balloons, or whether they're spy or weather or research or otherwise? I, I think the the objects we've discussed so far had really no means of propulsion or steering except for the actual Chinese balloon, which had limited control at best. But as I said, this declassification of these, uh, of these UAP videos, um, it shows that not only are these things maneuverable, but they can maneuver like, uh, unlike any other craft that's known today. Right. Okay. And- to to look at these videos um and discuss them will show a large difference between what we're seeing now and what they're quote declassifying for us to see and it'll kind of help bolster points that we're going to make here in a minute mhm right all right, so let's let's look at the gimbal video. So it's a it's an official U.S. Navy video uh, of a 2015 uh, UAP encounter taken aboard a Navy fighter jet uh, from the nuclear aircraft carrier, the USS Theodore Roosevelt. Um, 
This one was off the eastern seaboard near the Florida coast. Now, in the video, an object is seen flying at high speed with no obvious means of propulsion. You can hear the pilots talking back and forth. And initially, uh, one is saying that it's some type of drone. Now, the second pilot then says that there's actually a fleet of them nearby and that they are flying against the wind, which at that time was around 120 knots. Yep. Which that's a, that, that's a strong wind. It is. And that point that you're making there about the fleet of them, mm-hmm. um, Jeremy Corbell has talked about it, and they have left that part of the video out. It There's yeah. actually four more minutes of that video that shows the fleet, but they leave mm-hmm. that out of the video. Yeah. Yeah, so you just in the in the short video that that you you'll find when you search it, it's only about thirty six seconds long. Mm-hmm. Now, as they watch, the craft appears to slow down slightly, and then it begins to rotate, which is definitely a maneuver no known aircraft could accomplish. Right, right. Now, um, aerospace engineer. Travis Taylor, who I'm, I was talking to Adam about this before the show. I'm a I'm a big fan. Um, you know, I like I like Travis's work. I like how down to earth he is. How he he is so in- intelligent, but yet he can express himself in a way that regular you know dumb people like myself can understand it. Yeah, it's not. Um, it's not man crush Monday. It's man crush every day for Matt. That's, that's right. I mean, I love, I watch, I watch him on Skinwalker Ranch. I've, I've seen him on, you know, half a dozen other shows. Yep. He's good. Uh, as, I like as an him expert. Too. He is. He's good. I like him. But he did an interview last year uh, with George Knapp and that, and, and it's clear from the gimbal video that there are things in the video that are not, Typical of aviation vehicles. Right. Now, Knapp goes on to ask Taylor if he thinks he understands the physics of the object in the gimbal video. And Taylor responds, quote, no, I don't think I understand the physics. So what I do understand is that they're flying in a way that we don't. There's something going on there that appears to be a propellantless propulsion. Because we don't see exhaust plumes. We don't see turbulence wakes. And the other thing is we don't see matter around them change as it passes through the different media. Right, right. So, you know, it goes it goes near clouds um, and nothing's happening. The gimbal goes into water too, right? The No, the gimbal one doesn't go into water. Okay. I, I think it's the Tic Tac video. Yeah, yeah. It goes right. into water. It is. The and then the, the, that's I think that's the one that's off the coast of Puerto Rico. And he he brings that up because the point he makes is that if if that object was going as fast as what they could clock it as, and you know when you watch that video, um, you see him kind of catch up to it. It goes underwater. It doesn't slow down. And he says, you know, think about how fast it would have to be going to hit the water and not cause any kind of splash or, or, you know, there's no, there's no white caps around Mm -hmm. nothing. It just goes into the water and it keeps going. And to have that kind of power to propel itself at that speed through salt water. Um, that's that that's technology that we don't currently have. No, because the Um, resistance on anything in water is so much higher. Right. Then you put that much salt in water and you become buoyant. Right. So you're going to float more. You got and yeah, you fight harder to get through it. Right. And I I dare anyone to throw something that is the shape of the 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 gimbal object at mm-hmm. water and just see what happens to the water. Yeah. To the the splashback. Does yeah. the I mean if we were to fly something that we have now into the water at high speed, it would break apart. It would disintegrate. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you you hit water even at an angle from a yeah. speed that fast. It, it's like concrete. You know. Yeah. When I when I, when he said that, and I thought about it, 
the the first thing that came to my mind was well then it it's fake because they couldn't they couldn't reproduce the matter response you know they they could they could reproduce and they could overlay this object moving at this high speed over the water but then they couldn't they 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 couldn't get it to where they could make it appear realistic where the water would splash and everything else. But then I went back and thought, why, 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 if you were going to hoax this, why make it look like it goes in the water at all? Right. That just complicates things. Right. It's strange enough that it's flying above the water. Why make it that much more complicated by going, oh, let's make it go in the water. Well, we can't make it splash. Oh, that's okay. You know? Right. No, just, just leave the water out of it. Yep. So and then, so then that, that brings me around full cir- circle to go, oh, okay, we, this is something and we really don't know what it is. Right. Right. And that, right. What, uh, some physicists have talked about and what, I've heard Bob Lazar talk about as well is crafts like this seem to have a gravity propulsion Mm -hmm. because there is no visible signs of, you know, fuel being burnt and expelled and the way it moves, it has some type of gravity propulsion, whatever, which when you do that, it's theorized that it disrupts the space time continuum mm-hmm. which we've talked about before so if you're doing that and you're you know bouncing around inside this craft if you were to move like that in a normal craft you'd be dead the pilot would be dead because yeah. our bodies couldn't handle it but if you had gravity distortion it would change the way your body is feeling these g forces and the movement and stuff to where you wouldn't necessarily even know it was doing that plus it would change the way this craft reacts with the elements on the outside Mm -hmm. so it would be able to slice into water without causing disruption or slice through clouds without disruption because the gravity drive is actually causing a disturbance in our Mm -hmm. reality basically exactly and one thing too that is somebody brought up and George Knapp brought it up to to Travis, and he said, you know, people complain about why are all these UFO videos fuzzy? You know, why are they fuzzy? Um, you know, we're, we, it's, you know, the in the modern era, people can take crystal clear photographs with a phone. Mm-hmm. Why can't we seem to get it? Well, Travis, I, I like this response, okay? And he he backs it up with a little bit of science. Um, he said that, that, you know, the pilots are using advanced equipment that can capture clear video of other aircraft. But like I said, the object in the gimbal video is kind of fuzzy. And Taylor says, and this is a quote. He said, when you look at whatever the object in the is in the gimbal video, it is completely saturated in temperature, meaning it's really, really hot. And so it saturates the camera so you can't see any details about its shape. And and around it, even though it's really, really hot, around it is a region of really, really cold air, which makes no sense. This is from Travis Taylor. He says, it makes no sense. He said, you go from really hot to really cold, and then you have a bubble zone that you're now ambient temperature, just like the clouds. And this suggests that something is creating sort of a, a field propulsion. Yep. yep. Um, and, and he says he doesn't understand whether if it's because it's so hot, it's creating this turbulent region around it. He said, but that doesn't make any sense physically. But Taylor explains that based on the thermal appearance of the object, that if it were only eight kilometers away, it would have to be over 1,200 degrees, which would put it close to the melting point of aluminum. Mm-hmm. But 
if we consider that the object could be as much as 50 kilometers away, it would have to be near the melting point of steel, somewhere between 2200 and 2500 degrees to give this appearance on the camera. So either way, Travis says that it certainly wasn't wasn't the glare off of a jet some 50 miles away as some people have speculated. Right. Right. And your your point about the the fuzzy image if they're using a gravitational field drive. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to I'm going to say this for all UAP sightings, not just the gimbal and not just the one I'm going to go into, but if they're using a gravitational type drive, we know that gravity causes a shift in visible light. We know this from astronomy. Mm-hmm. There is a red shift and a blue shift, depending on which way the object is traveling in space. And if there is a large, dense black hole, then light will bend around that object. And Mm -hmm. to see through a black hole, you have to look at the light that is bent around the black hole and stitch it back together to create an image of what's on the other side of the black hole. If they are using a gravitational type drive to our naked eye, they might sort of be in focus, but then you try to get a device like a radar, a, a camera, a phone camera to capture that image. Well, the way the light is being bent around the gravity of this object, it's going to make it fuzzy. Right. So everybody, like you said, makes fun of, oh, well, they're always blurry, so they're always fake. Maybe the blurry makes it more legit if they are using a gravitational drive that we don't understand, but that they do, then quite possibly that makes it more legit because we can't see it in focus in our cameras because it's bending visible light around this object, this small, I say small, but small object in the pictures. So then it makes it blurry. And I I mean, I, I love that idea. You, you, you make such a, such a good point there because to me, it does if I were to see a UAP video and everything was crystal clear and focus and I was making out details, I would be like, this, this isn't right. This doesn't mm-hmm. seem, I, I, that would, that would surprise me more than seeing one that's out of focus. And yeah, you're like, is this a Spielberg I, I would almost, movie? Yeah. I would almost expect it. If it looked too good, then you would immediately assume that it was a hoax. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least that's what I, that's what I would do. Yep. Um, but that, that whole idea, cause I mean, your eyes, a camera lens, all they do is take in the light and interpret it as the picture. Yep. You know, so it, it could fool your eyes. It could fool a camera lens. And it, to me, the the camera lens would have a more difficult time because it, here it is, it's mechanical for sure, yeah, and it's trying to interpret the light that it's picking up when the shutter is open, um, and if that light is distorted, then the image is going to be distorted, especially when it's been calibrated to capture images with specific light, right? And specific light patterns, because we we know that if the light looks like this. It's going to be this in the end. And so these digital cameras know how to interpret that because of the way we've programmed them to. So, right. And, and there, those cameras, um, you know, designed by, uh, a company called Raytheon. Those cameras are designed to be able to take photographs, high res photographs and video of objects that are moving very fast, very fast, very far away. Yeah. And in different so, conditions. Yeah. So if if a piece of equipment like that can't get a clear image of this thing, you know, I don't see how anybody could. Right. And so right. some people will kind of think, oh, well, then it's fake. I'm like, again, to me, that makes it seem mm-hmm. more legitimate that it's not 
crystal clear. Right. You know, it definitely adds to the mystery of what it is. Yeah. And I, I just feel like the, the combination of different factors, Travis Taylor saying, don't know how it does what it does. Mm -hmm. And people like Bob Lazar saying, well, there's a gravitational drive to it. Then seeing other videos of these things moving in weird ways and knowing if it were to move like this, it would kill the passenger. Well, unless they had their own type of gravity in there and then they could divert. And then you think, okay, gravity bends light. So it all makes sense to me as to why these things would be blurry and it mm -hmm. adds to the legitimacy of them. Yeah. See, I think now we, we can figure out what we would have to do to be able to, to travel like that. We just hadn't figured out how we would do it. Exactly. Yeah. We know the theory, but we can't right. put it into practice. Right. We don't have the technology or maybe the specific element that we would need. Yeah. And, you know, there's not a lot of people going to sign up to be like, hey, I'll be the first test pilot on this. Yeah, right. Turn yeah, you into probably, mush. You're probably going to die, dude. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be turned into mush the first time you try to pull off a crazy maneuver. So on that note of talking about these actual UAP videos that have been declassified, I want to look at the go fast UFO that was taken by the USS Roosevelt, um, because I think this has some good points in it. And I've got some thoughts on the quote debunking of this one. So official U S Navy video of a 2015 UFO encounter taken aboard a Navy fighter jet from the nuclear aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt off the Eastern seaboard near the Florida coast is this go fast UFO, what they've dubbed the go fast because of, I mean, it go fast. That's why. Not right. <laughs> uh, now, if you watch this video, there's an object in the radar of a pilot who is tracking it. So you watch this object and it's blasting across the screen incredibly fast. If you haven't seen the video, go watch the video. And the pilot is trying to keep up with it. He's a good distance away, but he's trying to keep up with it to get a lock on it. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to get his targeting system to get a lock on this thing. And it is going so fast from the right to the left of his screen that he cannot get a lock on it. Well, once he finally gets a lock on it, you hear him scream, woo, got him. And then another pilot comes on the comms and they're both laughing. And uh, they're so excited that he finally got this lock on the thing that he's been tracking for a little while. Now, just like Matt's uh, gimbal video, there is a lot more to this video mm -hmm. than what we see. So there's more in the beginning of him tracking it and more at the end. But another pilot says, did you just catch a moving target? And he goes, nah, I put it on auto track. Okay. So if he's got it on auto track and it took as long as it did for the computer, which like Matt said, these things are designed to catch fast moving objects Mm -hmm. get a lock on them so that we can determine if we need to fire weapons at it. If it's taking auto track that long to catch it, it's going fast. It's moving crazy. Well, the pilot then says, what is that thing, man? And there's some inaudible stuff from ground control. And the other pilot says, look at that effing thing fly. I mean, they, they are having trouble believing how fast this thing is going. Well, then the video cuts off, but it's just a small object flying through the screen. Now, Mick West, he's a debunker or a skeptic, a writer, and his explanation is that the object in the go fast clip may not be moving fast at all. In fact, it might not even be moving. What we're seeing is the result of one of Michael Bay's favorite cinematic techniques, parallax. West says some quick math reveals that the object in question isn't near the ocean surface because it's flying along the ocean surface in the video. Mm -hmm. Now he says it's actually halfway between the, the jet camera and the ocean below. He says, this means that even if the object were totally stationary, for example, a weather balloon, it would appear to be moving at the same speed as the jet itself. 
Now, here's the problem. I don't agree with this at all because these are a trained fighter pilots, the best in the world who see these radar images day in and day out. They know what something giving the parallax effect would look like. Mm -hmm. And West is the only person purporting this claim outside of those who have parroted his claim. But if this were the case, the auto track wouldn't have had such a difficult time three times. In fact, trying to get a lock on this thing. So these, these radars are designed to hold a steady lock on something stationary as well as track moving objects. So secondly, if this were the case, we would have similar, if not exactly the same video from the jet who recently shot down the balloon off the South coast of Carolina. Mm -hmm. And we don't, the video from that plane is smooth and it's obviously a slow moving balloon. So this, this doesn't hold true for me. You're, you're trying to tell me that the military with this, the, these highly capable pilots and radar systems that are designed for dog fights and, and tracking fast moving objects and stuff are fooled by a parallax effect that we all know exists. We've seen it in movies and everything. So you're telling me that this go fast is just an optical illusion. I don't think so because this thing is flying. I forgot how fast they said exactly, but it's, I mean, it's, it's an impossible speed for right. anything that we have. And, 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 you know, my, my thought on that is that, why, why bother? I mean, yeah. why bother releasing it? And, and don't think that the military hasn't had experts working for them that have analyzed this video over and over and over. I mean, it was taken in 2015. Okay. They've had plenty of time to study this and consider all the possibilities and they release it to the public with this is one we can't identify. Right. And they don't release the full footage. And when Congress recently had their UAP council or whatever they called it, where the military released these videos to them yeah. for them to see, they didn't get any more of the video than we're seeing. So they did not get in your video, the part with the drones in it. Uh, mm -hmm. surrounding the ship. Right. They didn't get the beginning of this go fast video. So what is it that's being left out of these videos that even our Senate and house of representatives cannot see. Right. So mm -hmm. if it were the parallax effect, the government has had a long history of denying UFOs. I mean, Project Blue Book was set up initially to make fun of the effect. That's where we get the swamp gas thing. That's where mm -hmm. we get the weather mm -hmm. balloon theory is from Project Blue Book trying to debunk all of these sightings so much so that the guy that was running this Blue Book came out later and said he felt bad for doing this. And that's why he became a legit UFO researcher after blue book was done. So if we have a history of hiding UFOs or making something up about them, why even release this footage to say, Oh, Hey, here, why, right. why make it up? Why? Oh yeah. We know this is just a quote weather balloon, like Wes said, but we're going to show it to the, the government and the people of the world. And say, well, here, we don't understand this one. Why? It makes yeah. no sense. You're, I, I agree 100%. Why bother? Yeah. I mean, and, and so even if, you, even if your mind goes to, oh, it's a hoax, it's a hoax. Why, why would the military want to hoax anybody over something like this? What benefit do they get yep. out of this? 
We got I mean, decades of denying. So why now yeah, try to hoax? Right. And and nobody was pushing them to release this particular one. Right. We didn't know what they were going to declassify. Nobody had seen this. At least, you know, nobody that was able to talk about it. Um, so it, it uh, the whole idea that this was the, a parallax effect, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. Well, I mean, I would think that military researchers and scientists would have been able to figure out something that Michael Bay is able to do in his movies yep. and say, that's what this is. And for them to do that, to use that, uh, that parallax uh, effect to create, a hoax video again. I it. There's no benefit that I can see for doing that. No. Nope. So to me, this video just says, "Hey, this is weird. We've looked at it. We can't really figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna let you see it. You can decide for yourself what you think it might be. Right. Which and then I know there's people out there going, okay. You started out talking about balloon sightings. Mm -hmm. Then you went to Fugo. Then you mm -hmm. went to the gimbal and the go fast. Why did you do that? Well, we wanted to show you comparisons of balloons and actual unidentified aerial phenomena or the... AAT or whatever they're calling it now, advanced aerial threat uh, or uh -huh. AAP, advanced aerial, whatever the acronym of the day is, we wanted to show you the difference. And there, and it all ties back to that. Why did the president and the government come out and say, there's no alien evidence on these balloons? Yeah. And why? Are they pushing the balloon story so much? Yeah. I've got my and thoughts. So, so we've got in a sequence of events within, you know, a, approximately the last two years, we've got the government coming forward and saying, Hey y'all. Yeah. There's really some stuff up here. We, we haven't been able to identify, you know, the, and here's some videos of it. And then we have, you know, a, a spy balloon float into U.S. airspace, which seemed to be impossible. And then we find out, oh, no, no. Not only is it possible, it's happened before. Yeah. And, and then we have additional balloons that the government just says, oh, got to go. Pow, pow, pow. Done. And that's it. And it goes away. The connection with all of this, you know, to Adam and myself is everybody is looking up. Yes. Yep. Everybody's looking up. What's going on down here mm -hmm. where the government is telling us all to look up at the sky. What are we not supposed to be paying attention to down here? Right. You know, what's, what's happening around here that, all of this stuff happening above us for the last couple of years is taking our attention from. Mm -hmm. Now you're now you're like, oh lord, what? I I should have I should have brought my tinfoil hat up here mm -hmm. tonight, um, yeah. because that's kind of the, the all of this has led up to that. It's you know, hoax, not a hoax, what spy balloon, weather balloon, whatever. The government is telling us to look at it. Yeah. It's telling us to pay attention to it. And I'm going to tell you, I, I'll get into my, my theory of what we're being distracted from. And I, I think it's a, it, it's a, a multi-part, but it all kind of pertains to the same thing. So if, you think the government, whatever country you live in, the government of that country 
is going to release all of the information they have on UAPs to the public, you're silly. Mm -hmm. They will not do that. They'll release specific ones like the gimbal, the go fast, the Tic Tac stuff that cannot be proven or disproven. It's just weird stuff. And they're going to, they're going to get you looking at that. Then we've got these balloons coming in one that we know where they came from. The other ones that we don't, but we shoot them all down. And then the government comes out and says, oh, well, there, there's no evidence of alien activity with these balloons. I think personally that it's all a distraction from one having to disclose any more actual UAP info or videos because they're, they're now pushing, oh, well, now see what, what we thought were UAPs around the government installations. That's not, that was just spy balloons. And, right. and so like you said, retroactively discounting mm -hmm. UAPs. Yep. Plus they can say, well, I mean, we figured it out. We don't have to release any more information because it's all, it's all balloons with the parallax effect and all this stuff. And so we, there is no disclosure to happen. And it, it's keeping us looking at these certain things and going, wait a minute. The we all kind of knew they were balloons. Why are they saying there's no alien? Did, is this actual alien? It's trying to keep us from seeing the actual UAP sightings that we're having. Sure, we're looking up, but we're looking at the wrong things. We're not looking at actually what's happening. And I think like in the Tic Tac video that goes into water, mm -hmm. most of these, most of the, I mean, the, the gimbal and the go fast, they were seen over the ocean. So it goes back to my theory of, I think there is a connection between deep water and UAPs. So are they keeping us looking up because they have figured out these UAPs are coming from the ocean? Mm. Mm -hmm. And I personally think, I, I think I've said this before in another episode, but I've also kind of, with all the information that's coming out, kind of adopted a, another addendum to this theory that I think UAPs are not from another world, another planet in our universe. I, I've said that before. I don't think that's it. I think previously I said it, it could be from another dimension and it could mm. be. Yeah. But what I think it is, and I'm tying multiple theories I have together. There is an advanced species living on the earth that actually is underwater. And that's why our, I mean, the, the, I think part of the gimbal video that you were looking at, or it's the Tic Tac. I get the I get them so confused. But the the object is hovering. It may be the Tic Tac is hovering over a disturbance in the water that looks like water rolling over a coral reef. You know how you get that disturbance? Mm -hmm. Well, there's mm -hmm. a big thing under the water, and this object that the military is tracking is actually sitting above that. So what if there is an advanced species on earth living underneath the water and we finally figured it out. The government has finally figured it out and they're keeping us looking up at balloons and the supposed UAPs in the sky to keep us from seeing the evidence that's coming from below us. And yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it would make a lot of sense if you put a lot of this information together. I mean, I, I agree. I, I, I've, I've thought that for a little while now, too, that, um, you know, everybody, everybody's looking up. We need to be looking down and much further down uh, than we've been able to look before. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I love this statement. I have absolutely no idea. If, if this is legitimately true or not, but I've heard this statement several times where it says, we know more about outer space than we know about our own oceans. Yep. 
I think and it's been proven true. It may it may very well be. I mean, we we know how difficult it is to explore, you know, the deepest parts of the ocean, and we know how vast um, the the uh, the oceans on Earth are, and there are enormous areas that are completely unexplored. And I, I don't, I don't think we're talking about, you know, a, a big underground city in a bubble. Um, but we might, I mean, you know, who knows, but there's something going on down there. Yeah. And you know, we, we, these, these videos that we're seeing lend a little bit of credence to that, that we're, we we shouldn't be looking at outer space these these uaps coming in from other planets um you know they're they're right here uh you know we're we're seeing we're seeing things that are over the water over the ocean we're not we're not seeing a lot of these things zipping across colorado yeah, or um, coming in from like the atmosphere, we don't normally see that. Right. We see it in and out of the ocean and above the ocean, but we don't see it necessarily going, you know, past the ISS and into our atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't, I don't think just because for for years we've had a lot of UFO sightings and reports over the continental U S and over, you know, other land masses. I don't think that necessarily shoots down the idea that, you know, these, you know, the, whatever these, these crafts are that people have reported are, are coming from the ocean. I don't, I don't think it just completely negates that. Um, but I, I think it just, it, it just bolsters the fact that, like Adam said, we're not seeing these things come from high altitudes. You know, we're, we're not, we're not seeing these things in the stratosphere. We're not picking up on activity at, at that level or even around our satellites. You, you would almost begin to think, okay, we've got so many satellites that orbit this planet. Surely to God, if there was a ship that was coming in from outer space and entered our atmosphere, one of these satellites would have something, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we got satellites looking down at the earth 24 seven. Yeah. Surely it would have caught something well, coming in that would coincide with other reports. Right. We, we don't really have that. No. And like today, I posted the funny article and tagged you in it in the group about Newsmax saying that a mothership is sitting outside mm -hmm. our atmosphere sending stuff in. I mean, I did that because I knew we were recording this episode and I thought, oh, this will be a good little <laughs> teaser, not telling anybody mm -hmm. why. So if you mm -hmm. saw that and commented on that uh, post, you'll be hearing this about a week later and don't think I was serious posting that thinking there's a mothership sitting outside our atmosphere. I just thought it'd be a good conversation starter for this episode. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. If you wanna if you wanna put on your tinfoil hat or put a second layer of tinfoil on this or, you know, put a chin strap on your hat. So <laughs> make a tinfoil helmet and yeah, chin strap yeah. it down so that you're protected. Here is a a a, a weird thought. Okay. We have NASA, right? And we have all of these other organizations from different countries that are spending taxpayer money to go to outer space. But we don't have a large taxpayer funded organization that is looking into robots to go deep within the ocean. We have individual like billionaires and stuff making these submersible vehicles that they can ride around in, but we have no organization like NASA for our own planet to look under the ocean. Yeah. Right. Why is that? 
my thought, my conspiracy theory thought, the tinfoil hat thought is we know they ain't crap out there in space. So we know we're not going to accidentally stumble on something or show the public something, but we are pretty certain there is something living under the surface of the ocean Mm -hmm. that's causing these UFOs, UAPs, whatever you want to call them that are coming in and out of the ocean. And we do not want to accidentally stumble upon that. And more people than is necessary know that there is another species living on this planet that we have not known about until recently. Mm -hmm. Right. So why would we not have an organization looking under our oceans and taking all these billions of dollars? And instead of building a spacecraft to send us to Mars, let's build a submersible that can study the planet that we're sitting on now. Well, Mm -hmm. it's because we know there's some crap down there that we don't want publicized to anybody. And if this episode gets taken off the, uh, the internet, it's not (laughs) us doing it. So they, they have found us out and we are being silenced. (laughs) If this disappears for some reason, that's why we know we were right. Yeah. If Matt and I don't record any more episodes. Well, they got to us, but yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I tend to think too that um, this is not a United States thing. This is a world thing, and that oh, 100%, we're yeah. we're not the only ones no. that that know about it. No, um, because no, it's again, governments it's plural. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's m- multiple governments. You know, they would. You know, they, they have, you know, their own set of researchers and scientists, but you got to realize the people that really get into this and they really study and research and examine these videos, they're not, you know, they're they're not all just from the United States, you know, from all over the world and they share information and they share theories. And so I I think that if, if that's the case, that you know, the, the world has known about it and, you know, the, the governments have, have come together in agreement to say, we, we don't, we don't need to, this doesn't need to be public knowledge that, right. And I, and and I understand, I don't think that, you know, you, you become elected president, um, you become prime minister, um, you become whatever, what whatever worldly that you're handed this book and says, "Hey, we got to tell you something." <laughs> you know, yeah, under the ocean, there's. A, no, I don't. I don't think that's how it works. No. I think we've had I presidents say more, they're trying to dig into it, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you remember the Clintons coming out and saying they were going to dig into it, and then mm-hmm. uh, I think Trump even said, "I wish I could tell you more, but I don't." I don't know more. And Mm -hmm. so I think you're right. You become the leader of a country does not necessarily mean you're getting read into Mm -hmm. the uh, UAP scenario. They're just as in the dark as we are. Yeah. For the most Um, part. Other than maybe, you know, that the the people in the know would say, would be able to say, look, we don't really know what's down there. Mm -hmm. Um. But we have a lot of evidence that indicates that there's something down there. We we want we want to investigate, but we we also kind of don't. Right. We um, we don't want to poke the beehive. You know. I, I think some people begin to think, what if it's Cthulhu? You know. <laughs> what if <laughs> yeah. what if he's down there? What if um, it's Atlantis? Yeah. Uh-huh. Or or what what if we go poking around and it becomes something catastrophic, something that we weren't supposed to know about ever. I mean, I know that that really stretches it out, but I mean, there's just, there's just so much that points in this direction that you got to think, okay, whatever it is, whatever it is, if we ever find out a hundred percent, 
This is what I I I, w- I would almost guarantee. This is what we're going to be told. This is what we're going to find out. Is that so much of this extraterrestrial activity, so much of these aliens are actually they've been here the whole time. Right. You know, they've they've been under underwater and we just didn't know about them. I I agree with you and I I think um it is that let's not go poking around and poke the beehive because right. we know we've got something there but none of us have been able to actually see it. We don't know what it is and I'm sure there are people a lot smarter than us that know there's something there and it's some life form that, I mean, if you go back to, and I forgot the author and this kills me because he's a pro he's prolific in the paranormal world. And I, you know, if you know me, you know, I'm terrible with names. Mm. I, I, it took me 18 years to learn Matt's name. So (laughs) I have it. I mean, there's a reason we have our names on the video feed here so I can look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's Matt and I'm Adam. I'm that bad with names. <laughs> but he said the UFO thing to him, and this was back in the 60s, 70s. He said the UFO phenomenon to him actually seems like it could be the WOW, the watchers of the world. Mm. And they have always been with the world and they will always be with the world. Whether they are, he said, could be spiritual, but he said also, I think it's an advanced species of being that have taken it upon themselves to watch the world and make sure it's not destroyed. Yeah. Whether they came from a planet many, 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 you know, millions of years ago that was destroyed by them and they inhabited Earth and then primates evolved into people and they're like, oh crap, we got to keep an eye on these fools. They're going to blow it up (laughs) with nuclear weapons or yeah. So they're here and that's why they're seen around uh, uh, nuclear sites, military bases, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the nuclear ships out in the ocean, like the fleet Mm -hmm. that you were talking about of things around the gimbal video. I mean, his whole theory is they're designed here to watch us and watch the world. And I think, in my own opinion, that makes a lot of sense as it's not coming from light years away in space that, sure, I believe there are other life forms out there. I 100% believe that. But I don't think they either could get to us or would care. Why would they stop by an anthill? Yeah, you know, you're not yeah. going to come to an ant hill and go, "Hey, who's in charge of this ant hill?" They don't right. care. They're just going to fly on by and go, "Hey, look, that ant hill's evolving." They, mm-hmm. you know, that they, they make beard <laughs> oils now. Look at them. That's cool. <laughs> they figured out how to make a shiny beard. Uh-huh. But it would make sense if there was something invested in the Earth that they're living on this planet too. They have to keep this planet in working order at least not blown up. Right. So they don't want to divulge their presence by completely coming out and going, stop, Mm -hmm. but they'll do certain things. I mean, uh, we mentioned Jeremy Corbell earlier. Okay. Corbell and Knapp just came out with the Mosul orb video where there is an orb UFO scene in Mosul, around a war zone. We've talked about the Foo Fighters before. We've talked about all this stuff. They're seen in conflict zones. There are more and more videos coming out showing UAPs in conflict zones. So if you had an invested interest in this planet to make sure that it wasn't destroyed, you would keep an eye on the wars waged between these mammalian idiots that are so hell bent on war and destroying each other. You're going to keep an eye on that and go, (laughs) they can fight each other and kill each other off, but I don't want them blowing up our planet that we live on too. That's right. So let them fight, but let's make sure they don't do anything stupid. Like when your kids are fighting 
You know, like, I'm going to let them fight, but if one of them grabs a knife, I'm jumping in the middle of it. <laughs> you know, they can smack each other around, but there's going to be no stabbing on dad's watch. You have been hanging so, out at my house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so I, I, to me, that that's where my mind goes when we talk. Why are they promoting these balloons so much and then saying, oh, it's not alien? Why are they releasing just small snippets for disclosure videos and stuff? It's because they want us looking up. They do not want us looking down underneath us and figuring out. That's the reason we have NASA, but we don't have an underwater version of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, some of, some of y'all have already tuned out, so I'm not talking to y'all. <laughs> but to those of y'all who have stuck with these theories so far, this is different than Matt and I normally do. We will give you a specific theory that we have on a specific place or a specific event. But the, yes, this gets real tinfoil hatty and weird and conspiracy theory. But we felt like it was important to put this out because disclosure, they say, is coming. So we want to be on the record. Mm -hmm. Here's what Matt and I think. Here's how we feel about it. And let you guys, you can make the decision for yourselves as we always do. If, if you believe us or not, but that's where my head's at Yeah, is all of this stuff that we talked about in the beginning of the episode is a distraction from what's really happening, which we know that's the governments of the world do that. It's a smoke and mirror game. Hey, look over here. Look at the shiny puppet over here mm -hmm. while stuff happens underneath and around it. And I think that with this UAP disclosure is the fact that they are saying, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you guys are right. It, it's little green men bleep and blorp from Kappa Phi Epsilon system that are coming here and they're visiting us, but they come in peace. It's all fine. When really we've been living with these beings for millennia and yeah. the governments of the world don't know. They don't know what they are, why they are, who they are, but they know they're there and they're trying to keep us from finding out. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you guys think? You know, we've, we've, we've thrown a lot of information at you. How do you feel about it? Do you think Adam and I are off our rocker now that we've, we we've gone into all this. Uh, Probably do. Yeah, yeah, and that's okay. That's okay. We we think that a lot too. Um, <laughs> but but let us know and and let us know what do you think about this this type of show where you know we're we're just we're just presenting facts and we're kind of bantering back and forth uh, about theories. You know, this is like I said, the, these are the discussions that that Adam and I have one on one. These are the things that we don't record. Um, you know, but we, we might do more of this if, if our listeners tell us that this is something they enjoyed. So let us know. And the best place to do that is in our Facebook group. And, you know, we, we, we've got over what now, seven, 8,000 members in there. Yeah. Over um, eight. yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a great active group. It's a safe place. We want to hear your stories. We want to hear your ideas and your theories. We even want to hear your jokes and things like that um, because we're not going to make fun of you. No one is. We're, we just want to hear all your stories and your ideas. Um, so so jump in there. It's one of the best groups out there. Okay. Um, you can slide over to our website, which is graveyardpodcast.com, and there you can find links to purchase Graveyard Tales merchandise. You can listen to the show. And you can, you can become a patron. And Adam went into all of our tiers at the beginning of the show. We appreciate everyone who has taken time uh, to donate money to the effort that Adam and I put in. We, we sincerely appreciate it. Yep. Man, this, is, this has been fun. This, this I, has been a lot I of fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Yeah. I got to spew some of my wild theories. So. <laughs> That's right. And they're That's like, right. you do that anyway. And well, you know. <laughs> So until next time, we'll save you a seat 
in the graveyard. See you soon.